Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Tolliver, uh, and this is an introduction to the keyless go system I built for my old car. Simply walk up to the car, open it up, and get inside. Now, you'll hear a click because it's already detected. There's that click because it's detected that this wallet is in the car. And this wallet contains a bunch of normal wallet things and a tile, the Bluetooth tag, whose only job is to constantly advertise itself on Bluetooth and shout, hey, I'm here, I'm here, here's my MAC address, I'm here. And the device that I built listens for that I'm here signal and detects that that tile is nearby and gets ready to start the car. And when you hear that click, that means it's turned on the radio. If we buckle our seatbelt, like so, push in the clutch, and the car starts. Isn't that wild? I unbuckle my seatbelt, and the car stops. Because it knows that I'm about to get out, because I just unbuckled my seatbelt. And... If I take my wallet and just walk away with it, it leaves accessory mode and the radio turns off. Now, if we go underneath the steering column here, you notice a few things that aren't in the stock Miata wiring harness. The first is these blue wires, which come from the stock ignition switch connector. Now these branch off, they're wired in parallel, so they go to both the stock ignition switch, which is up here, and uh, this means that I can still start the car with just the key if I needed to, if my wallet got eaten by an alligator. And it also sends all of that to this. Now this is the brains of the whole assembly. The white box is a set of four optically isolated relays. Each one controls one circuit in the car. The first one, you notice, has a red light on above it. That's because the wallet is in the car, and that relay controls the accessory circuit, namely, mostly the radio. The second one controls essential engine electronics, so like the spark plugs. The third one controls less essential electronics, like the windows. And the fourth one controls the starter motor and you turn these on in a specific sequence to start the car. If I were to buckle the seatbelt and press in the clutch, it would go to two and four for a second, so essential engine electronics and starter motor, but don't draw power for the radio, for 0.9 seconds, which is how long it takes to start the car without over-cranking in my testing. And then it would switch to one, two, three, so radio and all electronics, but not the starter motor. So that would be the equivalent of the run point on the key switch. Now all of this is controlled by the black box with the green light on it, you notice. That is called a tiny tile. That is an Arduino compatible board, which is a smaller version of the Arduino 101. Now this is based on the Intel Curie module. And I picked it because the Curie module is one of the only Bluetooth LE modules for Arduino-compatible systems that can act as a Bluetooth LE central device. Most of them can only act as peripherals, but this one can act as the master device, not just the slave devices. Which means that it can scan for other devices in the area, which is the important feature. Now this did come at the expense of good documentation, affordable price, and a few other things, but it was absolutely worth it. It's, other than that, a pretty standard Arduino compatible. It detects that the clutch was pushed in using a Hall effect sensor with a magnet mounted to the pedal and a sensor mounted to the firewall. So when the pedal is all the way in, that's when it knows to start the car. Now this is a little jury rigged, but we'll see if you can See it here? It's just one of those add-on USB connectors. Originally I was powering it directly through a voltage regulator, but then I discovered that I couldn't get 5 volt power for the relays. 
because the relays need 5 volt power, but the tiny tile doesn't have a 5 volt uh, regulator on it. It only gets 5 volt power from its USB connection. So rather than get a separate 5 volt regulator, I just decided to power it through a USB connection instead. Now ordinarily this is where a YouTuber would say something like, So, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, smash that bell. But uh, I don't have any other videos on this channel. So instead, I'll say this. If you're here, it's probably because you saw the link on my resume that I put as a project example. So, if you like what you saw, go ahead and email me to schedule an interview. I am currently in the market for summer internships in software engineering somewhere in the Bay Area for summer 2019.